I'm Lizzie Francis and I'm an operating partner here at M13. And my work experience has been primarily at consumer technology companies, Gilt Group, Goat Group, and Textile Fashion amongst others. And I've run operations and marketing programs to drive early to mid-stage growth. Cool. So Lizzie, this is a pretty interesting environment that um, many folks probably have not been a part of, um, you know, new founders, uh, recent entrepreneurs, um, you finally have uh, an ecosystem where Facebook may be cheaper this month yeah. than last month um, in terms of CPMs. And so I just want to start with um, how do you balance sort of offense versus defense, um, given that you know, the constraints around many digital businesses have, have really changed quite quickly as it relates to marketing and customer acquisition. Yeah, and, and great call out. I mean, what we're seeing is that actually CPMs are, are depressing. So they're becoming uh, more affordable um, as advertisers pull out and people are increasingly online. I mean, look, you can't control um, these macro impacts to consumer behaviors. So what you can go on the offense is is a customer experience and thinking through actually your acquisition and conversion funnels and evaluating, you know, what can I impact um, that could positively improve those metrics through the funnel. And so my advice would be to take a look at your return policies, your refund policies, um, perhaps expand customer service hours. If you're like me, you're tracking every package because you you care more than ever about when things will arrive. Um, look at your shipping fees and um, your guarantees around returns and what those policies should look like. Those are the things you can absolutely control. And you need a test plan to think about all of the things that will really truly drive demand in this moment. Um, and I would say invest, if you are at scale, invest some of that margin into those things. Follow Rob's advice for sure. And um, look at leading indicators on your paid um, acquisition. Understand if your test plan and your hypotheses are actually uh, coming um, to fruition. And I would think about all, the, all those things as you're um, putting your marketing strategy to play over the next few weeks. I'm guessing many of you, it is um, day to day you're thinking about it. And for those where you can map it out over the next few weeks, I would really think through your test plans and be nimble and quick, particularly with regards to the areas of your business that you can control. And so let's talk about something, you know, Rob brought up the aspect of doubling down on existing customers, something I would call, you know, your whales, right? You've got yeah. these customers that spend a ton of money with you. How do you double down on them? Um, what have you seen work in terms of doubling down on these, you know, potentially highly valuable customers? Yeah, it's a great call out. And, um, and if um, for those of you who even with small cohorts or small customer bases, Look, you've already spent your money on these customers to acquire them. Um, they've already interacted with your brand. Um, this is where you want to actually think, how can I keep them loyal and engaged with the brand? I love um, today. I'm sure many of you saw the headline that Allstate Insurance actually decided to drop um, their premiums by 15 percent. I mean, this is um, this is not necessarily to drive share shift in this moment. What this really is, is actually a move to reward policyholders and keep their customer satisfaction high as they look at the macro environment um, with fewer people driving, right? So to me, that's a, a big company example of something that can be done um, even at a small scale. Rob brought up a great point. Call your customers. I mean, my goodness, there's never been a better time to actually have that multi-way dialogue with your customers and think about how do you keep them in loyal engaged? Um, do you need to change um, your term policies? Do you want to understand how they can help influence product development over the next four to 12 months? What do they want more or less of? So really think about um, where you've actually already invested and try to create that bespoke experience, um, even if it's small, and then think about how to scale it over time, um, because they will be so critical to driving your revenue over the next few weeks and months. And I think, frankly, customers enjoy this. They enjoy having dialogue with brands they love. That's part of um, what direct-to-consumer and, and what brands now understand matters. Customers can have this multi-way dialogue. It's not just a tops-down experience. So I think customers, particularly in this moment, would appreciate that. 
Well, I'm certainly hoping Geico follows uh, all states' example <laughs> um, and I get 15% off. Um, so, uh, should you be testing right now? And if so, um, uh, how do you think about a test budget, right? The go go yeah. days of raising venture money every six to 12 months is, are, are likely gone. So, um, yeah. where is that test budget going to come from? Yeah, I mean, um, I've always had, um, for those who know me, this philosophy, this 70 30 rule, which is 70% should be on things you know, and 30% and should always be, you know, innovate, ideate, test, and and think aggressively about um, beating yourself, essentially, and, and innovating against yourself. Um, and then I think as times call for offense or defense, as we've mentioned, you move up and down, you maybe it's 90, 10, maybe it's, you know, 40, 60. I think this is one of those moments where you need to ruthlessly test um, and um, I think to um, Rob's point, look at leading indicators. You know, you may not be at statistical significance or however you've defined statistical significance um, for your organization at this point, but you really need to look at those leading indicators and then ruthlessly kill tests or experiments that aren't working and frankly may prove your own hypotheses wrong. I think in terms of prioritizing where to test, um, the no brainer here is you should be investing in things that drive revenue and sales, right? And likewise at the top of the funnel. And likewise, you should be investing in things like great loyal customers because they will continue to drive recurring revenue for you and um, will become more loyal to the brand undoubtedly if you think about investing in tests that will um, make them loyal. Um, and so I think we're also going to find, uh, you know, this is an unknown time for all of us. For those of us who went through 2008, um, I think we all remember that these incredible arbitrage opportunities happened and um, great partnerships came together as people collided in, in the marketplace. So I think we can expect to see some of these opportunities unfold. I would, I would uh, recommend that people just stay on top of what's happening in the pipeline, network, 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 and really understand where it is that they can be testing. Um, my last uh, p piece of advice is, um, I just sort of told everyone to throw everything in the kitchen sink, um, but the reality is um, because you're going to be ruthlessly prioritizing, you need to be particularly crisp with your test hypotheses, right? So as you run these experiments, um, just make sure that you are crisp around what you're testing and think about what are things that will truly drive um, revenue or learnings within your organization that can then be doubled down on over time.